<laughs> it's not that cold. <laughs> <laughs> the dragonfly's wings flutter as our own hands do. They weave meaning into everything they touch. The falling leaves wonder as our own minds do. They dance to the rhythm of the wind. The bees create as our own hearts do. They fill their lives with beauty and purpose. This meaning, this vision, this intention, it is the art of living. On these first hot days of spring, the dragonflies awaken and buzz between the lilies. We feel ourselves wake with them, and we too are drawn to the water's edge. Feeling the cool water in our skin is healing, and we immerse ourselves. <laughs> I've always been entranced by the anatomy of a dragonfly, these real-life fairies dancing by the water. So I'm designing a magical dress inspired by the intricacies of their wings, their graceful movements, and their place within the ecosystem. Nature always informs my designs, and today I'm feeling particularly inspired by the depth of the spring greens and all of the creatures awakening. I always take a long time to design something, and I've been wanting to make this dress for years, so these first steps feel really exciting. The first step involves getting all of my floating, shifting ideas simplified into one vision. Then I transfer this onto a 2D sheet of paper. Designing something always involves so many layers of thought. First my ideas are intangible, and then I have to simplify everything so much that it can become a bunch of lines on paper. Then it becomes 3D as I practice and sew a twirl. Sewing involves this constant movement between ideas, paper, and three-dimensional fabrics. Trying to design a sleeve with as many seams as a dragonfly's wing is definitely the hardest project that I've ever set out on, but there is excitement in the challenge. I'm making a dress which is going to be a dragonfly's wing. So I made this top ages ago and I love it, but it's a bit dodgy, but I really love the detail of the wing. So I'm expanding that. I want it to be a long sleeve with a cuff. I want it to be very dramatic. And so I made this practice one yesterday, but I don't think it's dramatic enough. So I've added a lot more flair to each piece, which is really hard to do when I have to repat and make all of it, but I want to make it perfect. I want it to have poof that kind of goes all the way down to here. So to do that, I'm adding an extra few centimeters to each panel which means that I have to go back to the drawing board and remake all the patterns that I made to make this one. But it's okay, because I've got reference the old patterns. A breath, a fresh air and as annoying as it can be to go back to the drawing board, then sew another practice, and then back to the drawing board again, I love this process. It's amazing to see something so slowly come to life from a vision in my head. Of a new I think that I have finished the practice of this sleeve and I think I love it. I love the drama. I'm so glad I added the extra puff in here. And now I'm just going to make the rest of the twirl practice for the rest of the dress and see how that goes and then I can make the real thing. I feel like such a fairy. I had kissed a 
So today I'm on to, I guess, the last step of the first step, which is just seeing if I'm completely happy with the practice. So I love, I love how the top worked out. I'm really happy with it. It's, I haven't completely finished it. Like there's a few things like cuffs and stuff, but I'll just do that on the final. And obviously it only has one sleeve, but now I'm going to make the skirt of it and see if that's all perfect and if it all fits together and if I'm happy with it. And then I go and do it out of the real material. And I do this just to make sure that it's perfect before I make it out of nice material. This is actually um, a curtain that me and Julia had in our room when we were really tiny kids. And so it's the perfect thing to make a practice out of because if you do stuff up, it's not the end of the world. Whereas I've got a really nice silk that I'm going to make the rest of it out of. And so I just want to be really sure that everything's perfect by the time I get to that stage. But the problem is that I ran out of this curtain, which is quite nice fabric. Um, and now all that I have left is this one, which is stained and pretty ugly, pretty ugly shade of blue. So I'm going to make the practice skirt out of that and it'll just have to, you'll have to be okay. It's fine. I won't actually use it. Whereas this top, I think I will use at the end. So I'll, I'll add another sleeve to it and maybe unpick the skirt off it and then I can have it as a top. <laughs> That's what I like about making twirls or practices. I like to make them practical as well so you can use them so it is less wasteful so that's why i always try to make them really well and like you're making the real thing and that's also good because then when you do make the real thing you're sure that you've got it right i finished the practice and i'm really happy with it it's funny to look at it because it looks like a child's costume but that's just because the material is so bad but when it's in the real material, I think it's going to be beautiful. This project, along with so many other thoughts about connection, creativity and care, are in our book. We are so excited to share it with you and you can pre-order now. The link in our description will take you to the best place to pre-order the book in your country. Come on! 
Now that I'm happy with the practice, I'm going to make the real thing out of this beautiful fabric. I'm really, really excited. It's going to be so fun, but it's very hard to sew with because it's silk organza, so it shifts a lot and it's really hard to cut and then sew and all of that. And to make it even harder, I'm doing French seams, which are when you sew the seam the right way and then face it the wrong way. And then sew on top of that so that it looks like this, which I think looks like a dragonfly. Look at that, it's a dragonfly's wing. So I love it, but it's pretty complex and it's funny because normally when you sew something, you sew it the wrong way out if you want it to hide the seams. But with French seams, you sew it the right way out and then flip it. But because I want these French seams on the outside so that they're really visible, then I flip it again. taking shape. This is the hardest seam that I've ever sewn, but I think it worked beautifully. I'm sewing the second sleeve together and it's coming together it's so hard I think it's the hardest thing I've ever sewn this fabric just keeps moving around it's so slippery and so you have to be really careful I'm 
I'm just sewing together all of the panels for the skirt. It's really scary because the fabric is so slimy and slippery that I'm really scared that they're not going to line up. But I think that I cut them perfectly, so I think it's all going to be fine. I set out on this massive project to challenge myself. This dress is almost impossible to make and the process makes me wonder why I chose to do this. But I think that challenging ourselves and pushing past our beliefs of what we think we can do is so important. Sometimes I miss this on the farm. Sure, every day is full of challenges, like constant fencing or escape goats, but these problems all have meaningful solutions. I love the feeling of satisfaction after you complete something that you never thought you would be able to do. Sometimes, in the habits of every day, life can become too easy, so I like to create these new creative challenges where my mind focuses on solving just one thing. There were so many times in this project that I wanted to give up. I questioned if this dress was even possible to create. But slowly, through all the ups and downs, all the broken silk, unpicking and tears, slowly this dress emerged. And as it took shape and every seam began to join, I also stitched together each element of myself. This whole project is documented in some very special pages of our book. It would mean the world to us if you could pre-order it to help get it out into the world. The link in our description will take you to the best place to pre-order the book in your country. The music in this video is by our friend Indira Elias, and excitedly Indira is doing a tour of Australia at the end of the year. You can find her links in our description too. Thanks so much to our patrons for your support always.